Hey everyone, and welcome back to episode 35 of my Create Mod series. Now today I'm going to show you on how to make an infinite power source using the furnace engine and the flywheel inside of the Create Mod. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to drop a like and subscribe as I make a ton of Create Mod content and you are not going to want to miss it. Now, I know that I've made this video before, probably titled exactly the same, honestly, uh, but that was a very old design, something I made a couple months ago when I was still learning Create, and there was a lot of bugs with it, a lot of problems, and uh, basically what I've decided is that I will redo the video with a whole different system uh, that's a lot more efficient. I figured looking back into my older designs was a good idea just to improve them as much as I can. Uh, so without further ado... Let's jump straight into the video. So everything inside of this chest is what you are going to need. Uh, I'm going to have all these items listed in the description, so don't worry about having to figure out what's on the screen. Uh, but the thought process behind all of this is that we're going to be making a kelp farm, and then we're going to be smelting it into dried kelp, uh, and then taking the dried kelp, turning it into dried kelp blocks, and then smelting the dried kelp blocks um to then re-smelt the more kelp that we pull uh might sound a little confusing but the furnace engine flywheel gives off power uh when you're smelting things so having an infinite amount of smelting is the reason we're gonna have infinite amount of power so uh let's go ahead and grab all these items and we can jump into the building so just like most of my videos i have some things that are pre-built don't panic um i'll explain it as we get into those sections that's for more for me so i can build it off the top of my head uh but as you can see right in the front we have a gigantic glass tank and it doesn't need to be glass it just needs to be some sort of walls and this is where we're going to make our kelp farm now, our kelp farm is going to be much larger than my kelp farm video, and that's because we need a lot of kelp to continue this machine to run, so we won't run out of kelp to be able to smelt it. Uh, you probably could make it a little bit tinier than this, but I figured making it larger was a better idea, just so there was no chance of it ever stopping on you. Uh, but if we go ahead and look at this, uh, we have a block that I've dug down two blocks deep, and then I've gone one, two, three, four or excuse me, one, two, three, four, five blocks out on each side, and then made a one, two, three, four, five um, block wall on each side. So that, that's how large this container is. Uh, all we're going to do, though, is go into the very center. We're going to place down a magma block, place down an encased fan aiming downwards so the gearbox is facing up, place a mechanical bearing on top of there, place a radial chassis, and basically what we've done here is we've created some form of a generator so that we can actually power this system. So we're just going to grab a lever. We're going to place it on this magma block, and we're going to flick it, and you'll see it'll start turning. And we can, we can just right-click on the mechanical bearing to go ahead and stop that and cover this on up. Because our next step is that we're going to slime one side of this radial chassis. We're going to grab linear chassis, and we're going to place one, two, three, four, five... Now, you don't actually need linear chassis for this setup. You could use any type of block. Uh, that's totally up to you. You would just need um, super glue instead of slime at that point. But I usually just use linear chassis. It's something I've been using for a while. Uh, but then on our front side over here, we're going to grab our harvesters and place down one, two, three, four, five harvesters. On the back side, we're going to slime all these guys. And then we're going to place down one, two, three, four chests and place a portable storage interface aiming to the outside. Now, before you start it up, we actually have to do something really quickly. So we'll just place down an encased chain drive to hop on up. Uh, we're going to look at these linear chassis, hold left control, and then scroll this down to one. If you have regular blocks, you won't have this setting. You could skip over this, uh, but you will have this setting no matter what you're doing. And this is our radial chassis setting. We want to scroll this down to be five. And if you've done this correctly, you should see it highlights all the blocks and it's only selecting the blocks that we want to use. So now we can right click on our bearing pick up our encased chain drive, and our machine is up and running. Now, our next step is going to be a little bit more uh, complicated because we actually have to fill this entire area with water. Now, um, I know I've only put a single water bucket in there. I will have had an annotation pop up on the screen saying, hey, you definitely need more than that. So I'm going to go ahead and cut to where this entire tank is filled with water. All right, so our next step is that we actually have to uh, place our kelp down so it can start growing. So I've put the exact amount of kelp that you will need. Uh, there'll be one extra, which we will use a little bit later. So if you have grabbed a stack in 12, uh, you should be fine to go ahead and fill. Basically, we're just going to fill the ground level um, with kelp because as it grows to the second level, the harvesters will harvest it and put it in the chest and the portable storage interface. So uh, let me quick cut now until the kelp is all placed down. 
Awesome. So we have our kelp farm now up and running. Uh, and if you look closely as this machine gets closer to the glass wall, right on this block, not the center block, but the one to the left, the portable storage interface lines up so that there's one block of space in between. Uh, so what we're going to do here is we need a way to export our kelp. So we need to place our portable storage interface and then we'll rotate it so it's aimed at that portable storage interface. Then we're going to just drop down two blocks, place down a shaft, move over one and place down a second shaft, connect a mechanical belt, and then we can place a chute right on top of this belt, and we'll right click on this with a wrench to make this transparent. Uh, then at the end of this mechanical belt, we can go ahead and place down a depot. And what we've done here is we've been able to export our kelp out of our machine, put it in a chute, place it on the belt, and the belt will then place it onto the depot, which will will end up taking a little bit early or a little bit later into this video. Now we're gonna skip a couple steps. Uh, we're gonna start building the actual furnace that's gonna be smelted. So all we're gonna do is just place some block um, diagonal up from here, and then we're gonna place our furnace off of this depot uh, and then we can we can pick up this block now so this is the furnace that the the depot items are going to have placed into here uh, so what we can do now off of this furnace is that we can grab our furnace engine and we can grab our flywheel our furnace engine we will place off and then we're going to go one two blocks and place down our flywheel so the gearbox is aimed in this direction all right, so our next step is going to be, again, a little bit tricky. So what we're going to do is we're going to make it so that this kelp can actually get pulled off of this depot and placed into our furnace. And we have to be a little specific by this because we want it to go into the top item of the furnace. We don't want it to go into the bottom. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab an andesite funnel and we're going to place him on top of the furnace. Now make sure that this arrow is facing towards the furnace and not facing in the opposite direction. Then we're going to go diagonal off of this depot right here and just place any block. I'll just use the encased chain drive for now. We're going to then place a mechanical arm on top of this encased chain drive. But prior to that, we have to actually select uh, what it's going to pull from and what it's going to place into. So we'll go ahead and right click on this depot. So it's now going to take items from this depot. And then we're going to double click on this andesite funnel. So it deposits items there and we can place our mechanical arm and then take out our encased chain drive. So there you go. It'll now pull items from this depot and place it in this andesite funnel. Now let's go ahead and start building an output to once items are in the furnace and it's time to export these guys, we're going to place a chute directly underneath it. We can even make it transparent just for some debugging purposes. Then we're going to place a shaft and rotate it so it's in this direction. And then we're going to go um, basically diagonal up one block, just like this. Um, I just used the depot to place that. Connect a mechanical belt. Move over. Place one, two shafts, just like so. Mechanical belt. And what we've done here is the items, once they get smelted, will fall through the chute onto the mechanical belt and continue to go in this direction. So what we're going to do is once we have our kelp that gets smelted, it's going to turn to dried kelp. And eventually we want to turn it into a dried kelp block. So what we're going to do is we're going to use a mechanical press to turn them into blocks. So all we have to do is take a basin and place it diagonally up from this mechanical belt. We'll grab an andesite funnel and place it onto that basin. Then we're going to grab a uh, mechanical press. We'll place it so that there's one block in between from the basin and the mechanical press. And then we'll move to the other side because this is now going to press our uh, dried kelp into dried kelp blocks. But we, need now, we now need a way of outputting those things. So we're just going to place a depot um, directly up the side of this basin. And then we're going to go ahead and move diagonal and place another depot right here. Because what we're going to do is build a little bit of a buffer. So we're going to grab our adjustable crates. We're going to place down two on top of each other, and what we're doing here is that our dried kelp blocks are going to come out, get placed onto the depot, they're going to go inside of the adjustable crate, and then get placed down on another depot. And what we're doing here is making this as a little bit of a buffer. If we make too many dried kelp blocks, we don't want it to clog up the system, so we'll store them inside of an adjustable crate. So if you really want to, you can actually remove them from the system. Uh, so what we're going to do is just right-click on this adjustable crate, look at this number hold shift and scroll all the way up so it holds 2048 items which is just going to be our dried kelp blocks now we also have to do an andesite funnel onto this adjustable crate we're going to use our wrench so it's pulling items off of the depot and placing it into this adjustable crate and we'll do another andesite funnel off of it with the arrow facing down onto this depot
All right, so we just have one last step, and um, I've actually realized that I've put a brass funnel that we're actually going to place onto this furnace. Uh, technically, you could use an andesite funnel for this as well, uh, but you can use a brass funnel either or. I'll put a notification as well on the screen. Um, but what you got to do is take this mechanical arm, and we're going to right-click on this depot, and then double right-click on this brass funnel. So it takes and then deposits, and then we'll just place our mechanical arm in front of here. Now, all we have to do is power our system. So we're going to start over by our flywheel because eventually this is where our power source is going to come out. And this will power our system as well as all the other systems that you would like to power. So all we have to do is take one shaft, two shafts, grab an encased chain drive and place it towards that shaft and then twist it by placing the other one underneath. Then we're going to place one shaft. We're going to take a gearbox and place it here. Take a vertical gearbox and place it here so that it's aiming outwards underneath of this mechanical arm as well as upwards on top of um, basically next to this mechanical arm. Then we'll take a cogwheel, place it here so it powers this mechanical arm. We're going to place one shaft underneath. We'll go to the other side. Place another shaft and then place another shaft. Then a vertical gearbox, cogwheel, go to the other side. Vertical gearbox, cogwheel. Then we're going to place a gearbox because this will actually rotate the incorrect direction. So using a gearbox will flip it. You can also use a clutch with like a lever as well. That'll fix this as well. Then on the other side, we're going to do an encased chain drive and an encased chain drive so that it will carry it over from this mechanical belt and this mechanical belt. And then over here, we're just going to go ahead and place one, two, three, four, five cogwheels to power this mechanical press. So the very last thing that we have to do is open up this furnace. We're going to put a dried kelp block in the bottom, put a thing of kelp in the top, and now all of our machine should start working. Now, um, if it ends up failing for whatever reason, all you have to do is um, simply go ahead and add more kelp or something like that right in the beginning. It might take a second for this machine to begin to work. For us, since we had this kelp farm going while we were building this whole machine, we have plenty of kelp that is now going into this system. Um, so all I'm going to do is just wait a couple seconds just to show you that it still runs after a couple minutes. There we go. We can see the press is now moving because it's gotten nine kelp. The kelp block has gone into this crate, been placed onto this depot. And now we have our mechanical arm going back into the furnace to place another dried kelp in here. And what's really nice is we can hold a stack of dried kelp blocks in here as well as a stack of kelp. So that means this furnace is going to go for a very long time because it's roughly 20, uh, 20 items can be smelted by a dried kelp block. And you can see that we already have a line of kelp that's lined up here as well as we have dried kelp already processing for the next block. So all you would have to do is if you want to use power from this machine is you just have to basically tie off from one of these encased chain drives or any of the gearboxes, um, anything along those lines connected to whatever machine you would like to power. Um, I know that this is a lot simpler of a design than the one that I originally made with a tree farm and things along those lines. So um, I really hope that you guys like this new design. I just want to say thank you guys so much for watching this video. I really hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, I really wanted to go ahead and switch this up and start looking a little bit more towards my original designs because I know that some of my most popular videos were the very first ones I uploaded. And a lot has changed inside of the Create Mod and a lot has changed... Uh, basically during my designs. So I decided to use a lot more newer machines inside of this video uh, and really showcase uh, how you can make this machine a lot more efficient and a lot better with a lot less problems. So if you enjoyed this video, definitely drop a like, definitely feel free to subscribe. I just started a competition in my Discord server uh, to make a parkour map and the winner is going to get a special rank inside of my Discord. So if you're interested in that and you're interested in building a parkour map using the Create Mod, go ahead and stop by in the Discord. Um, but other than that, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys all enjoyed, and I will see you guys all in the next one.